Okay, so in this video I will be checking out the brand new custom uh, DDR5 heatsinks made by Bart. So if you aren't familiar with him, he runs his own uh, Bart store website where he sells a lot of different like cooling gear for PC components, both standard and extreme cooling oriented things. But anyways, so uh, these heatsinks are mainly designed for DDR5 memory sticks. They do work for both DDR4 and DDR5, but DDR5 has this own uh, like brand new uh, power delivery uh, system over here called the PMIC. So uh, that's why as these components they stand out from the uh, uh, rest of the PCB, you cannot use the uh, common memory heatsinks that, that have been out on the market this far. So we need custom heatsinks that have like specifically made like cutout over here. So uh, there's a cutout on both sides of the memory heatsink as on uh, many of the stock heatsinks that come with the uh, memory sticks by default from different manufacturers they do have some kind of cooling pad on both sides of the memory stick. So uh, what we'll do is that I will use standard thermal paste on top of the memory chips themselves so here, and the back side is just completely blank. So there's nothing on the back side, so I will use a sheet of one and a half millimeter thick thermal pad over here. Well, pretty much the same situation as how it was by default. I used uh, paint thinner once again to remove the uh, heat sinks from these Vengeance DDR5 uh, memory sticks. This time around, as these are much easier to remove or disassemble compared to the dominated GT memory modules, which are known to be very difficult, I only had to uh, sink the memory sticks in the uh, uh, liquid for only like 30 to 60 minutes, like one hour or so. It was completely enough to uh, be able to remove the heat sinks. So uh, one and a half millimeter thick thermal pad on the back side and on both sides of the PMIC I will use one and a half millimeter thick uh, thermal pad. Now I was discussing about this with Barks and a few other guys and uh, the recommendation at least from Barks is to use a thermal pad that's very elastic. The issue with the uh, Jelly Solutions GP Ultimate which I've used a lot myself it's very good performance wise it has very good performance but it's very uh, hard it doesn't like uh, it's not very elastic so as the uh, when you go colder on uh, if you put the memory sticks on ln2 when you go very cold the uh, uh, heat sink as well as the stick itself it shrinks so uh, it kind of lives on with the temperature so uh, you want to use a thermal pad that's very elastic to prevent damage so some guys have actually damaged memory sticks by using uh, very hard thermal pads, just like GP Ultimate. The GP Ultimate is very good on ambient cooling. So when using it on air cooling or water cooling, it's very good. But for uh, LN2, so sub-zero purposes, at least Bart uh, recommended to use uh, the Arctic uh, thermal pad. It's very elastic. I've used it myself. In uh, some situations, it's not my favorite one, but it's very elastic. So it should be very safe when uh, going on LN2. So that's why uh, I think it's a very good option as well. So here's the uh, pad itself. I will just use normal scissors to cut a sheet for the back side over here. And uh, then this kind of square or is it rectangle piece over here for the PMIC. But it's easiest to do all of that work off camera. And I will also use some insulation. That's kind of debated topic. Many people don't use any insulation at all on memory sticks because, well, ice and snow, they don't con uh, conduct uh, electricity. So uh, technically you don't need to use any insulation on the sticks themselves if you go very cold. There's definitely not going to be any water whatsoever on the memory sticks if you go very cold, like minus 80, minus 100, even colder than that. But if you... Uh, stay even close to uh, like minus 20 or zero or so on, you can actually have water on top of the uh, memory uh, sticks uh, PCB. I like to do it myself, but you don't, you don't need to use any insulation on the backside because there's no components at all. There's just a blank PCB with solder mask over there. So uh, no need to worry about uh, 
moisture on the back side but it's i think it's very good idea to put some uh, uh, vaseline at the power delivery uh, components over here and then between the memory chips and then just make sure you clean the uh, top part of the memory chips with crc electronic cleaner before you apply the thermal paste and you assemble the cooling uh, heat sinks whatsoever so uh, that's my way of doing things and that's what i will be doing with these particular memory sticks over here but i will do most of the work of camera now and i will just uh, show you the different steps of this process okay so now the back side of the memory stick has been covered with one and a half millimeter thick uh, arctic uh, thermal pad and these cutouts over here on the both of both sides of the memory heatsink they have uh, a cut piece of uh, half a millimeter thick arctic thermal pad at least on this side it's not perfect but i think it should be just fine enough now it's pretty hard to do but yeah so now the uh, this the front side of the memory stick has been covered uh, with vaseline so that's why it's much easier to do everything off camera but anyway so the front side has been covered in vaseline and uh, now i will just clean off the uh, uh, memory chips i will uh, apply some thermal paste it can be the pink thermal paste from thermal grizzly or kpx so the blue colored uh, thermal paste from kimping cooling and uh, then we will just uh, put the uh, second part of the memory heatsink over here. I think, based on my uh, previous knowledge, it's wise for the very best temperatures, it's very wise to apply uh, thermal paste between the holes. So between the memory heatsinks over here, so over here and over here, and maybe a tiny dot over here to get better uh, conductivity between the uh, cooling plates that's what i did with the ddr3 and i'm pretty sure it's still best to do over here as well so that's what i will be doing i will uh, just do this off camera because it's much easier and i will get back to you very soon okay so now the memory chips themselves have a nice coating of kpx thermal paste and also the uh, spare space between the holes has some uh, thermal paste as well to make some great contact between the uh, cooling plates so now, and let's actually try this. So uh, let's take the uh, nuts, like so. Okay. And now let's put the uh, second block. It's actually the wrong way around. And that's the uh, plate. And now this is the hardest part. So we need to, uh, good thing for this part is uh, some tweezers so we need to uh, place those nuts in the holes and then we will just use the uh, allen key uh, screws to tighten up the heat sinks but that's pretty much it so uh, in some ways it's a little bit easier than dual sided memory sticks but that's pretty much it so i will just uh, tighten those screws and we can look at the uh, end result okay so now both of the uh, uh, memory sticks are finished. I used uh, KPX thermal paste between the uh, chips and the uh, uh, heatsink on both of the sticks and after a bit of cleaning it looks pretty all right but there is uh, a bit of thermal paste between the two uh, cooling plates on, on the top part of the memory heatsink. Now uh, these heatsinks aren't obviously the uh, cheapest ones so uh, they do cost around 80 euros on parkstore.com so they are pretty expensive but i think they aren't that cheap to produce i think even the ek aluminium heatsinks they cost somewhere around like 30 euros or so but they didn't have very good uh, mounting pressure anyways and there aren't that many these might be one of the only heatsinks that do support ddr5 due to the pmic uh, power delivery system that's present on the pcb but anyways so uh, i'll use these on the z690 dark kimpin so it will be very interesting to see what kind of numbers these memory sticks can produce but that's pretty much it i'll put all of the uh, uh, links in the description box of this video so uh, definitely check out these memory heatsinks if you are interested in them and uh, Give me a thumbs up if you like to see this video and subscribe to my channel 
and thanks for watching one of my videos once again and I will see you on the next one.